Evidence suggests that the Earth's climate is changing, with average global temperatures increasing, causing sea levels to rise. There are several factors involved in rising water levels. Melting glaciers and ice caps, melting permafrost, which releases more greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, and warmer temperatures, causing more moisture to be condensed into the air, leading to higher rainfall due to increased humidity. These factors combined could create a potential snowball effect, which may leave some areas vulnerable to severe flooding. China is one example of a low-lying country that could be badly hit by rising water levels. Shanghai, its most populous city, sits less than two meters above sea level, and there is a history of serious flooding events in the region, such as the Yellow River floods in 1885, Wuhan in 1931, the Yangtze River in 1954, several incidents in 1998, 2020, and widespread flooding in 2021, which devastated parts of Shaanxi, Henan province, and Nanyang. Sustained flooding and rising water levels could impact China in the long term, with large parts of the country becoming submerged. If we take a look at global topography, there are several other places that may be vulnerable to rising water levels. A one meter rise in sea levels could engulf 15% of Bangladesh, and a two meter rise inundate Dakar, the capital of Bangladesh. Venice in Italy suffered its second worst ever floods in 2019, which left large parts of the city underwater, and being just one meter above sea level, it is very vulnerable to flooding. Some other places at risk include India, Vietnam, Thailand, Suriname, Myanmar, Egypt, and the United States. One country that leads the world in flood defense is the Netherlands, where they have developed innovative engineering solutions to combat coastal flooding, using a system of dikes, dams, and floodgates, as well as natural dunes, to provide protection for their coastal regions against storm surges from the sea. Increased rainfall and storm surges can also cause rivers to overflow inland, and many countries are vulnerable to such flooding with statistics showing a recent escalation of these events in several places around the world, including Eastern Australia, New Zealand, Europe, Oman, Turkey, Japan, Afghanistan, and Niger. Deforestation is another issue, as trees store water, and if an area is cleared of trees, it becomes much more prone to flooding and landslides. Another danger of rising sea levels is that it may cause many islands to disappear. A two meter rise in sea levels could inundate over one half of the Maldive Islands, an atoll in the Indian Ocean. In the Pacific Ocean, the atolls of Tokelau, Tivalu, Kiribati, and those of the Marshalls could be devastated. Several islands have already disappeared. In October 2018, Hurricane Wallaka washed away a remote 11 acre Hawaiian island as the storm passed through the area. Several months before that, Russian scientists reported a small arctic island had disappeared, saying that only wide open ocean remained visible at the site. And near the end of 2018, a local newspaper reported that an uninhabited islet off the coast of Japan could no longer be found, presumably because it had sunk beneath the waves. If we look back in time, there is evidence to suggest that there was previously a great flood after the last ice age, at around 7,000 years ago similar to the story of Noah in the Bible, with much of the Earth's landmass being submerged under water. Scientists have been studying ice and rock core samples going back thousands of years to look for signs of flooding in the different layers, and at the Black Sea there is evidence to suggest that sea levels have risen over time, possibly due to rapid flooding, with scientists reporting evidence that the shoreline had altered due to rising sea levels of between 30 and 80 meters. One possible outcome of increased rainfall is the reseeding and greening of places which are currently deserts. Many deserts contain fertile soil with dormant seeds, and an increase of sustained rainfall could see these places spring to life. There have been several projects to promote such revival. One example is the Parkar in Pakistan, where water wells and submerged solar pumps draw water from deep underground, which the locals use for irrigation to aid agriculture and promote plant growth in what is essentially a desert. On the flip side, higher temperatures could also lead to increased desertification and droughts in other places. 
It is interesting to note that if the melting ice continues in Antarctica, the land underneath the ice will be revealed, and this could give us an insight into the ancient history of the Earth, with potentially fascinating fossils and geological structures being revealed. We can only imagine what may lie beneath the ice. There have also been predictions made concerning the possibility of increased migration, largely into cities, due to climate change. The World Bank has stated that 216 million people could be forced to relocate due to climate-related issues by the year 2050, and it predicts that more than 1 billion people are at risk of being driven from their homes by adverse climate events, such as flooding and drought. So what is the real evidence that temperatures are on the rise worldwide? How likely is it that flooding will increase, and could we really see some places submerged underwater? Although many scientists agree, and the evidence shows that average annual global temperatures are rising, it is not yet clear how quickly they will continue to increase. If climate change really is man-made, then what can we do to help slow the rising temperatures? It is suggested we could lower our consumption of meat and switch to a plant-based diet, reduce flying, and drive an electric car. Governments worldwide are trying to find more sustainable energy options and ways of living through investment incentives and regulation. Should we really worry about climate change, global warming, and rising sea levels? A study undertaken by the United Nations predicts a possible rise of 80 centimeters, or two feet, seven and a half inches, by the end of the century. But according to another study published by the European Geosciences Union, some areas could see a rise of 120 centimeters, or three feet, 11 inches, within the next 60 years. If these predictions are correct, then it may take much longer to see more widespread flooding of larger areas. We may have to get used to living in a hotter and wetter world, with more frequent and damaging weather events. And it is interesting to note that hurricanes in the United States have increased steadily in frequency and intensity over the last six years. We have also seen an increase in wildfires across the globe, devastating large parts of Australia, the United States, France, Greece, Portugal and Russia. In contrast, there has been freak deep snowfall in Madrid, Spain. There's also been large cyclones in Fiji, winter storms in Texas, sandstorms in China, a heat wave in Moscow, and typhoons in the Philippines. In the long term, the threat could be higher depending where you live, with low-lying areas being at greater risk from the effects of unpredictable forces of nature. If you are concerned for your safety, you may want to move to higher ground, construct a bunker, or even build your own Noah's Ark. If you have any other ideas, let us know in the comments below, and make sure to like and subscribe.